daylight shifting time and a groovy occultation. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. Well, my friends, we're getting close to that annual abomination I like to call daylight shifting time. Uh, don't you mean daylight saving time? Same thing, and I don't like it. Oh, come on, James, it's not that bad. Speak for yourself. Moving my clock forward makes me have to wake up an hour earlier. Uh, but I, I thought you liked waking up early, I mean, to look at the stars. Yeah, but even us early birds have our limits, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, so what James is griping about is something a lot of people find annoying about this time of year, and it can actually impact stargazing. Fortunately, we don't have to move our clocks forward until March 12th, and we have a really groovy occultation of Aldebaran by the moon later this week. What are we talking about? Let's show you. Daylight saving time is that time of year between the second Sunday of March and the first Sunday of November when everyone moves their clocks forward one hour. Not everyone does it, but a lot of people do. The purpose of us collectively changing the time on our clocks one hour forward is so that the evening daylight lasts longer. This in turn sacrifices the sunrise time. During the course of the year, the amount of daylight and darkness we experience gradually changes due to the curvature and tilt of the Earth. Even if we didn't change the time on our clocks, we would still notice that the daylight hours in the summer would be longer and the nighttime hours shorter. The opposite is true during the winter months. Here's where the issue lies. For those folks like Dean who live at more northern latitudes, the amount of daylight and darkness they experience during the year can vary dramatically. But for people like James, who live closer to the equator, daylight saving time isn't as useful. Let's show you. The Earth tilts at roughly 23 and a half degrees with respect to our path around the sun. During the equinoxes in March and September, neither the northern hemisphere nor the southern hemisphere is pointing more toward the sun. This gives us 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness, hence the term equinox, which means equal night. However, when we're close to the solstices in summer and winter, the hemispheres of the Earth are pointing more towards or away from the sun. Because our planet is round, people who live at extremely northern or southern latitudes see a whole lot of daylight in the summer and very little sunlight in the winter. The problem is, in the summer months, the sun rises several hours before most people wake up in the morning. So to compensate, we all collectively move our clocks forward one hour, and thus, as a society, we agree to wake up an hour earlier. That way, we can have more daylight in the evening hours before we go to sleep. For us astronomers, daylight saving time delays when we can begin our evening observations, which is probably another thing that adds to James's frustration. Yeah. Speaking of which, let's see what the Moon and Aldebaran are doing this week. Okay, we've got our skies set up for Saturday, March 4th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're looking high in the sky facing southwest. Timing is important for this one because the almost first quarter moon is among the stars of Taurus the Bull. On the night of March 4th, the Moon is going to get tantalizingly close to Aldebaran, the star that marks the eye of Taurus. Let's advance time one hour at a time, and you'll notice that as each hour passes, the Moon gets closer and closer to Aldebaran until suddenly... Where did Aldebaran go? Yep, the Moon is going to occult Aldebaran. For those of us living in the Eastern Time Zone, the Moon will be in the Western sky during the occultation. Yep, that means everyone in North America will be able to see it, presuming the clouds stay away. So there you have it, one last really cool celestial event before we have to move our clocks forward an hour. And it's all there for you to see when you keep looking up.